Dr. Salvatore Dosimo Jr., Assistant Professor of Surgery, Stony Brook Medicine, describing the use of fully covered self-expandable metal stents for the treatment of gastric torsion applying laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. Disclosures include Boston Scientific Consultant, however this role is not pertinent to this presentation. Our objective is to demonstrate a case of gastric torsion following a sleeve gastrectomy procedure in review of our institutional experience and outcomes as a tertiary referral center and bariatric center of excellence. We present a 34-year-old female who underwent a sleeve gastrectomy at an outside facility. She presented on postoperative day 32 following a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy with complaints of nausea, vomiting, and the inability to tolerate per oral intake for nearly two weeks. Our workup included an upper GI, which demonstrated no flow of contrast into the distal stomach or proximal small bowel. We diagnosed gastric torsion, which occurs due to a bobbius like mechanism along the anatomic axis of the stomach with clinical presentation of a gastric outlet obstruction. Current literature regarding endoscopic management of this pathology is limited. The patient was brought to the operating room, underwent endotracheal intubation, and an upper endoscopy was performed. A complete obstruction at the midpoint of the gastric sleeve staple line was noted due to a clockwise twisting of the sleeve. Using gentle pressure, the stomach was mobilized in a counterclockwise fashion in order to untwist the sleeve. This allowed us access to and visualization of the pylorus. Retracting the scope proximally demonstrates the significant clockwise torsion being applied to the sleeve gastrectomy, causing the gastric torsion to occur. The decision was made to place a self-expandable metal stent for treatment of the gastric torsion. The endoscope is then advanced into the duodenum. A guide wire with a 4 cm hydrophilic tip was placed into the duodenum. Radio opaque external markers, in this case paper clips, were used to mark structures such as the proximal and distal area of the gastric torsion and the gastroesophageal junction. The markers assisted in placement of the stent distal and proximal to the midpoint of the gastric torsion. The scope was then removed from the patient's body, leaving the guide wire within the duodenum and proper position is confirmed with fluoroscopy. A fully covered, self-expandable metal stent, 150 millimeters in length, was then deployed over the guide wire using fluoroscopic guidance. Once the stent is deployed, the deployment system and the guide wire are removed. The endoscope was then reintroduced and correct placement of the stent was then endoscopically evaluated. The scope was advanced through the lumen of the stent in order to ensure the landing zone of the stent allows for access to the pylorus. In this case, the outflow track of the stent was partially obstructed by the antrum. Using endoscopic graspers, the stent was then pulled back in order to ensure the pylorus remains non-obstructed. Imaging immediately postoperatively demonstrates placement of the stent and provides a baseline for future evaluation if stent migration is suspected. In this case, slight buckling in the stent at its midpoint due to torque of the gastric torsion should be appreciated. The patient was discharged home on postoperative day number five on a high protein liquid diet. The stent was removed on postoperative day number 14. 
Following removal of the stent, an upper GI was performed, which demonstrated non-obstructive flow into the distal sleeve and proximal small bowel. The patient was discharged home on the same day. Our experience as a tertiary referral center and bariatric center of excellence has yielded a total of six patients who underwent endoscopic management of gastric torsion following a sleeve gastrectomy. Of note, the earliest case occurred on post-op day zero and on post-operative day 77. All six cases were confirmed torsions via upper endoscopy in order to rule out strictures as a source of obstruction. One patient had the stent placed at the time of the index operation when they were noted to have a gastric torsion during intraoperative EGD. Three patients developed refractory nausea and vomiting on postoperative day number one. In addition to the current case, one patient had a delayed presentation, having developed worsening nausea and vomiting eight weeks postoperatively. The most common complication after stent placement was stent migration. One patient did develop a subsequent leak, which was managed by repositioning the stent across both the leak and the gastric torsion. Currently, we have a 100% success rate with this method of treatment. The mean length of stent placement was 19.5 days. A mean follow-up of 17 months has demonstrated all patients to be asymptomatic, tolerating a normal parole diet, and their weight loss was not affected by their torsion. A current post-op BMI of 37.1 is noted with a current percent of excess weight loss of 55.45%. Mean pre-op BMI for this group of patients was noted to be 52.9. Thank you.